Hello everybody and welcome to another Houdini tutorial. Today we are going to look at some more cloud tools from our atmospheric toolkit. So let's look at our ground fog HDAs. The ground fog HDA is something that will help you create ground fog. It works in tandem with another HDA called terrain isolation. So this is designed if you're using a terrain like this, a mountain, and you're like, okay, I wanna simulate basically fog in one area of this mountain. And usually when you get your mountain geometry, it might be bigger, it might be smaller, it might be harder to control areas. And also scatter uh, like data and emissions around that terrain to make it easier for you to work with. So let's take a look at this and see what this HDA does. So what this HDA is allowed to do, or the terrain isolation HDA, basically will create a good idea or a good base um, emitter um, for your geometry so you can actually create some ground fog. The first output is for the geo area that you'll emit from. You'll notice it'll cut your terrain in half, so you can only really work with one half of it at a time. Um, if you go to the save to disk or load from disk here, you can save things to disk if you wanted to. Um, you can also go over here and decide, you know what, Let's see which sections I can isolate and also scatter some information across. So if we go to sections one or two here, we can see the other half of our terrain right here. Sometimes it might appear on section two, one, or zero, depending on what you want. Uh, the fog, always once you take this first output and pump it into your ground fog, it will always um, the fog will always emit from the white areas, essentially. If we go do out all, this will show all of your terrain, like that. If we go out no color, it will just show your terrain with no color. So let's take a look at the terrain isolation HDA, and this is how you can start to isolate sections and decide which areas um, you'd really like to emit fog from. So if I was to drop down a little pointer here, it's gonna think about it for a few seconds. And if I was to change this to black, so now we have a more gradual fall off at the top of our mountain, so the clouds would only form below it. So let's go back. So over here, this is where you can isolate your sections, um, geometry amount per section. So if you wanted to keep a certain range of geometry per section, you can do that as well. So this section right here is a little work in progress. Please ignore it for now. Basically, this will allow you to basically create a clip zone in between all the three radiuses of your isolate sections. Now we can do our fall off attributes. So here is where if we were to play with this fall off ramp, you'll notice something different happen. But you can usually visualize these fall off attributes the best when you go to the out all tab right over here because you now notice that it this kind of fall off range has changed. So if I was to go to point one here, you can see the fall off range right here. You can also interpolate it as much as you want. Uh, you can even create like terrain thickness if you really wanted to, you know, play with how thick you wanted your terrain collect colliding object to be as well. Um, voxel size, uh, it, it does have to remesh whatever terrain you put into it. So the more Voc the lower the voxel count, the more up res something might be. You'll notice it's way more up res now. So just keep that in mind. Now if we go to our ground fog HDA, we'll go out fog, and it will think about this for a few seconds. These HDAs are a little bit heavy, but I am working on making sure they're better in the version point two release. You might also have more hope here if you Go back to your terrain output and cache it out to disk. So that's what we're gonna do here. We're gonna load from disk. It's gonna freak out for a bit. We're gonna save this to disk in background. Oh, so let's go to our ground fog. So it's gonna have to create an em emitter for this. So I recommend going down to your second input and visualizing the emitter from there. So we'll go to emitter, load from disk, save to disk. It's gonna save out your emitter right now. There we go, there's our emitter. So now you can see that those are the areas that will be emitting our fog. Um, this is our geo emitter that we're taking the um, points from in 3D space and emitting from. And these are the collision objects that our smoke 
will collide with. Now, the collision objects might take a while to cook out, especially if you don't have your caches loading from disk or cached out yet, so just be aware of that. If that's the case, you want to hit cancel right now, go to disk fog, go to collisions tab, load from disk, voxel size, and go save to disk. Alrighty, so now this is cooked out and we can see our collision mesh right there. And now we can go to our ground fog tab and actually start to simulate our ground fog. Now that's not thinking and calculating every single thing on frame one. So let's go to simulation tab and we'll make sure the voxel size is pretty big so we don't have to, you know, wait too long for playback. Now you can post sim, you can actually see that we've generated some fog across our mountain. So we can actually take a look at that and we can actually say, okay, I want to see how this looks with my geometry. So I can go over here and say merge and out all. Well, let's do out no color so we can kind of see what's going on here. And we'll wait a few seconds. And now we can see that we have our mountain. I'm going to just change the color of this really fast from white to black. And now you can see where our smoke would actually lie on our mountain. You probably want to give this a lot of pre-roll so you have a good range, an estimate of where you'd want this fog to be. But that's pretty much an introduction to this tool. Hi everyone. So the next tool in this toolkit we're going to cover is called the Cloudscape Export HDA. This will allow you to cloud combine a bunch of things together, as well as essentially merge the densities together and create volumetric attributes that you can generate across your clouds. Um, it's always important to generate color information and also trans uh, density information with your cloudscape. So when you go to render your clouds in, let's say, a render engine or process it through lighting or create uh, passes of different attributes for comp. Um, it's always a good idea to add attributes into your clouds. So there's more post-processing options. So if you go to cloud combine, you can cli combine up to four clouds. So you can choose how you want to combine them and you how if you want them to match the lower resolution or the higher resolution. And that's pretty much the only two options you have on this HDA. You also have something called the volumetric attribute generator. So if you go to our geometry spreadsheet and we go to the primitive area, you'll notice there's three um, attributes. If you click on cloud combine, there's only currently density, but if you go to volumetric attribute generator, you'll notice there's a grad and a CD. So this will create a gradient fall off and this will create a color fall off so you can manipulate that in comp. And those are the two nodes that I wanted to run over today. And thank you for watching this tutorial. My name is Kate, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.